<laughs> okay, sorry if I'm being too dispersed and trying to make too many details of things that I assume. I mean, I, I want you to know that we all assume, or I assume, that everything that is going on in Spain is good. So when I'm going to the details that makes this less hype, it is not because I don't agree with a lot of things that are happening, it's just because I want you to have the key, the, the details that are useful to you. So if, if it's black or white, this is white. But I want you to, to, to bring you through the gray in order to learn a lot of tensions that, that are out there right now in, in terms of what, what's going on. So let me uh, give you one, one fact. Uh, in Spain we had, like, in Madrid we had like 300 something demonstrations a year. Uh, obviously, every day. every day, but obviously lots of them were tiny and no, no, they were registered as such, but there were no huge demonstrations. But from 2011 we had three, four, five huge demonstrations, uh, at least, uh, in Madrid, like, very powerful and very, you know, making a point. Um, the last, oh, uh, since European elections, when Podemos won five MPs, there has been none. So, this is just a fact that symbolizes something that is real, which is Podemos has took all the energy, talent, people uh, from the very best uh, activist groups uh, to put it on uh, the internal machine of the party. Uh, not only Podemos, also the local initiatives who are more attached to those uh, groups, those activists. So Podemos took it from there, and Madrid uh, took it from there and there, and Barcelona took it from there and there. And uh, they all are very well connected um, somehow uh, in the bottom part, although the strategies, as we talked before, are different. Uh, what I mean is, um, I thought that what, what I was looking at during two or three years was the born uh, in the 15M, the born a, a new civil society in Spain, which we don't have. And why we don't have a civil society in Spain, uh, a good social fabric? Uh, mainly because during the 80s, when we uh, went from dictatorship to democracy, uh, all the good people, talented people, energy and power that were taking form as a civil society in Spain ran into the institutions when the left and center left won the elections at the beginning of the 80s. They transformed the country, and that is true. I mean, we can, we can list a lot of criticism points about how the transition was, was made, and that is part of the triumph of Podemos, that criticism. Uh, but Besides that, they really did a lot of things that are, I think, good, like, objectively speaking. But the victim was the civil society. There were no independent NGOs, there were no unaffiliated un 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 uh, activist groups uh, beyond these uh, little traditional social movements that did their best, but they actually hardly managed to shape the public opinion. So we hadn't have a civil society in Spain until 2011. In 2011, a new civil society was born, and 2015 is dead again. Uh, for now, I mean, I'm dramatizing right now. Uh, so uh, this is important because what why the center left and even the left in Spain became center, 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 
and neoliberal and not attached to the ideas because there were there were no one out there making pulling them back. Yeah, pulling them back. I don't know, you can do that. And there were no one out there doing that job. So at the beginning, when all the talent went into the institutions, it was very good because uh, uh, individual and social rights were recognized. A lot of good things that had to be removed from the dictatorship, the bad things that had to be removed from the dictatorship were removed. Very good. But during the 90s, when that work was already done, the idea of we achieved everything was established, and the centralized and the left were doing this path with no links to the people uh, because there were no, no one pulling back. Uh, so uh, at this point, uh, this is important because now Podemos and the rest of the of the organizations has the responsibility to like win <laughs> and uh, have a honest relationship with the outside. Otherwise, if they don't win and also they 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 break relations with the outside, we will be talking about again the death of the social movement, the new social movements in Spain. So that is something that is in, in mind of a lot of people and it's something that is behind a lot of tensions that are on the table right now in Spain, inside Podemos and outside Podemos. Uh, okay, let me, this is like a problematic introduction, but let me show you this guy, 2012, I think, about 13 already. Uh, this is uh, this is a guy who had a TV online, actually YouTube uh, show, uh, who was broadcasted in a very marginal local TV in Madrid. So the audience came from YouTube, basically. Uh, he had a show uh, on politics, uh, talking about politics from the left perspective. Uh, he had this Latin American uh, context background uh, and he is a professor, a teacher, the cool teacher uh, of the science, political science uh, faculty in Madrid and with some other uh, teachers uh, of the same faculty they, they started to do this show on, on online TV thanks to a local uh, TV program that put the plateau, the, the, the stage and the cameras and this. After a few months this guy was tweeting one day, tweeting uh, against one of the conservative TV programs uh, in, in local television. Uh, well, in not, not local, state television, but not very, very popular. Very conservative. And the presenter said, okay, let, come one day and explain your, your opinions to us, if you are so brave. And he said, okay. So he started to go to this program, which is in the <coughs> most conservative, like very traditional and mani manipulative, like the worst uh, <laughs> TV channel in the state. We don't have another one. So that is, is uh, the TV program. Uh, to, uh, to this TV program, you don't want to go. I mean, you, do, you would say, uh, no. He said, uh, yes. And he started to debate. <laughs> so, the presenter is saying, okay, we will. They are talking about how violent uh, demonstrators are in the last demonstration of 15 years. And they are like looking for connections uh, with some absurd things, of course, violence of previous demonstrations, all the worst. 
All the words. Now, this guy really had this look of being the conservative guy. Uh, he looks very conservative. Yeah, he looks the cliche, the, the whole cliche. Okay, so he now uh, is introducing. He introduces for the first time to the Pablo Iglesias. Uh, professor. He has a local online program. Is it a tricky question? First thing I have to say is thank you for inviting me to hostile uh, territory. First, crossing enemy lines is also funny. <laughs> and we can talk. Uh, the presenter, you're, you're not the enemy. If you see yourself as the enemy, it's your problem. <laughs> you are very welcome. Yeah, yeah, funny, uh, good, very good enemies. Yeah, we, we are very uh, gentile to each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there is this story. And he began to go weekly to the show. So these little pieces of the entire show goes into YouTube and people like enjoy so much having this guy boom, boom, like punching the face of conservative journalists that are not used to have in front of them some, someone with real talent for dialogue, for team making, because Pablo Iglesias is so brilliant in direct confrontation on TV and outside TV, you can say that. And uh, uh, he, he's very good at it. Um, obviously, he was very, even he was better at it before because he had the, all the time for that. Now he has a part to rule, so he, he lost a little bit of, of this. Yeah, but uh, he was so brilliant. So he became famous in YouTube in the in the leftist uh, side. And uh, uh, from that, uh, he became like. He got the, attract, the, 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 the attention of bigger debates, uh, the big networks, like not this one, but it's tiny for stream right people, but you know more more known uh, and watched uh, TV programs, and he, he started to appear in, in those programs. So. So he started to go there and, and there he confronted people like her, which is one of the most known uh, politicians leader for the conservatives. She is Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Spanish Margaret Thatcher. With a little bit of Berlusconi. Right? <laughs> and uh, he started to say things to people and to make jokes, to, to, to ridicule, you say that in English? Okay, so, so yeah, to ridicule people who had been always the best uh, speakers, and so, you know, uh, we were so good at it. And Pablo Iglesias came with this tale and started to shut them up. So that was so attractive to so many people. And uh, he became like the, the whip of the left against in the media, right? So. One of the reasons, all this was before Podemos. So at some point, some of the colleagues of Pablo in the uh, faculty said, okay, Pablo, <laughs> we've been complaining for a while of the inability, the, the, the incapacity of 15F movement to move forward, to mature, to grow, to go to institutions. They are so naive. But we can do something like real and try to make some political, really institutional move. We can uh, go to Izquierda Unida, which is our party, which is the Communist Party in Spain, and say to them, uh, do a primary elections, and you 
go for the primary election for the European Parliament. And uh, this four persons group design that strategy, go to Izquierda Unida, which is their party, because Pablo was a member of Izquierda Unida, and Izquierda Unida say, no, <laughs> no you're not, you're not no. no primary elections, things are going okay with, mm, for us, because the polls say we are growing a little bit, so that's okay, that's enough for us, 10%, well, 10%, that's, that will be the, the best results in 15 years, so that's okay. Uh, so we, we don't want experiments and, and that stuff, and 15M is okay, but we are a serious party, uh, which, which has been here for a long time, so we don't want participation experiments and that stuff. So Pablo and some other people, say, okay, we will do this on our own. Then they talk to a very, very uh, small party in Spain, which is anti-capitalist left, and uh, which are not many people, but they are known because they have been there and they are they're honest in their work, so, and they talk with them some of them were very, very close to Pablo as well. Pablo had a very good relation with anti-capitalist and anti-capitalist left, and so they founded Podemos, based in this uh, strategy level uh, decision-making group, and thinking in spreading through these little structures, but existing structure in different uh, cities of anti-capitalist left party. So, uh, they, you know, we published that they're doing this, and in, in, in 44 hours it became like huge conversation, and they begin to, to grow and grow and grow and grow. And this group of uh, professors uh, realizes that the connection with anti-capitalist left is going to be a problem in the public debate. <laughs> <laughs> so, little by little, they began to yeah, uh, give less protagonism to that. Uh, that thing. This is hard because two months before Podemos was born, uh, Pablo Iglesias was in a summer camp of uh, anti-capitalist left, and in a video that is also very well, it's not that famous. Uh, he said, I, before Podemos was born, I would give everything to achieve that my friend Miguel, anti capitalist left leader, my friend Miguel runs into the Congress. I think something has to be done because Miguel is the best talented man, and I think she, uh, he should be in the Congress. Three months after, the strategic decision for Podemos was okay. Let's have a little bit uh, of distance from this. Uh, I'm not judging. Eh? I mean, it is there is no doubt that they did the best thing in this strategically speaking. So they it worked. It worked. So they began to appear like the tool for the anger of the people in the institutional uh, realm. Uh, they didn't promise like anything precise. They didn't need it to, because if they uh, made concrete decision uh, proposals, they will have, they, they will have done a lot of internal debate of Euro, yes, Euro, no. European Union, yes, European Union, no. Uh, nationalization, yes, nationalization, no. They just were there saying, okay, I understand the anger of the people. You know that I understand you, that this is no freaking, this is not, this is not a pose. It is true that I have not clear exactly how are we going to do the things, but you can really trust in me because I'm really honest in what I'm doing which is very different from the rest of the political parties. And that was enough. In two, I mean, in a month, they 
uh, achieved to have a lot of people working for them in the circles, new circles bumping uh, and uh, appearing in all the cities, uh, demonstrations and, and public uh, uh, st strength uh, demonstrations uh, in, in, in a lot of, of, of cities. Uh, and uh, even, if, even you, if you compare rallies of the big uh, uh, parties with rallies of Podemos one week after, uh, before the elections, the Podemos were bigger. I was, whoa, 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 this is going on. But traditional media and traditional political parties didn't see it coming at all. For them, it was like a freak guy uh, trying to uh, a freak guy trying to take advantage and hate shows on TV. What bad? There's a paradox, a paradox here. Politicians, uh, journalists, mm, well-educated uh, people, professional, liberal professionals, teachers, doctors, and that stuff. Those people don't see TV political debates because they think it is rubbish TV, because it is. Uh, it is just controversial thing and no depth in the, in the debate, so it's like all the sh only the show. Only screaming, people are screaming, ah, 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 ah. it's not important. So politicians and key players in society and in media was, weren't aware of all the talent, or the strength, or the danger for them, of this guy. So this guy begin, began to be very famous in TV, very good in TV, and a lot of people in their towns begin to work for campaigning for, for that. In two more weeks, they did a very good, brilliant uh, strategic decisions on framework, on words they were using. On, it was very, 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 uh, very good campaign, and they got a very good result. And uh, after the elections, began another, after the European elections, it began another phase. They had to decide how to grow as a party. Actually, they were not a party. They were not registered as a party. They went to the elections without being a party, because it was so fast that they were first a candidacy and then a party. Uh, so they had, they had no structure, they had no participation methods, they had nothing. They had one million voters and five MPs in the, in, in the European Parliament. That's it. And a TV show and a lot of people trying to participate. That, that's it. So they had to build the party. And they had to build the party with all the attention of the media. And that has been like the ugly part of it. Uh, the, 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 the complicated thing because they have been they were the perfect party to rule for general elections and general election has are now in, in two months that means that uh, from the European election to now is like one, one half uh, one year and a half yes from the last European elections we're not following it <laughs> I know, okay, okay. Yeah, well, it's come so on, you are waiting for a pick. Yeah, <laughs> okay, year and a half. Yeah. In a year and a half, year and a half seems a very short time. But for them it's been eternal. Because what they needed was First elections, elections, elections. In general elections, not local elections, because I can have uh, problems in the local uh, structures and, and that stuff. I want the general elections to be here now. And it's been one year and a half, and that is, it's, it's been very complicated to them to sustain the rhythm, the hype, the good-looking politics, and very complicated. And uh, this is... Estamos aquí para ganar. Estamos aquí para formar gobierno. Estamos aquí para cambiar el país. So, after 
for four years talking about new politics. We don't want huge leaders saying to the people what they have to do. We don't want rallies. We, we want assemblies. We don't want participation. Suddenly, <laughs> you become uh, this. <laughs> okay? This is a bullfighting arena. Uh, and it's, I mean, the only place where you can do that in Madrid and so it's, it's paradoxical, but it's not important. Um, that it was traditionally used by Social Democrat Party to do the rally. You say rallies from this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now it is used by Bohem also as a menace. It's like I, 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 I have the ability to, to, to feel this and you don't have it anymore. And this weekend, which is the Foundational Congress of Podemos, <laughs> Foundational Congress of Podemos was not an assembly, what well, they called it, that assembly, but it was an assembly. It was a rally uh, in which they voted, that's true, between two different factions in Podemos. The more circles attached and the more Elitist. central democracy... Uh, Elitist and popular. No. I don't know. I yeah. wouldn't go that far. It's popular. like... Uh, or... One is... How do we structure the party? Okay, one theory was circles have delegates, delegates participate in middle middle structure decisions and blah, 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 blah. okay so the top is controlled by the structures mm -hmm. okay. uh, and the other part was much more uh, it was different was uh, we don't want the circles we don't want to repeat the same structure like Izquierda Unida or other parties because that makes very slow and non-effective structures and we need to run very fast to be ready for the general election <clears throat> and we want people to participate individually so you can sign up in the website with your email and then you can vote the decision of Podemos you don't have to be a member of a circle you don't have to elect three layers of representatives so then uh, decide things for you. No, no, this is like direct uh, democracy, internal democracy. So we do primaries, but we uh, and everyone, everyone votes, but not everyone affiliated. Everyone, and uh, we we have to decide if we are uh, supporting uh, the minimum income uh, way. Uh, and we have to vote it, everyone, not only the parties. So, and through the internet. Uh, and uh, that sounds, for me, I have this digital and uh, networked background. So for me, that, that sounds very good. But in, the, in terms of, of democracy, you have a guy who is in TV all day, and then you have people that are not in TV because you decide who goes to the TV. And then you launch a vote to decide things. Who do you think is going to reach more people? Because decisions are not made in the structure of the party. They are made by public you know, as peers on TV and say, I need you to vote in the primary. So. Obviously, no one is no one uh, is against the leadership of Pablo Iglesias in Podemos. Everyone in Podemos, everyone uh, has no doubt that Pablo Iglesias and the, 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 the group are the leaders, and they should be the leaders. But this meeting was quite intense. There were we. Um, Whistled, whistled uh, between parts. Uh, it was quite bizarre because it was like the positive energy made party, and uh, suddenly all that frictions came to, to, to this moment. And, and uh, he said, the heaven is taken by assault, not by consensus. Uh, that's uh, 
that's a quote of um, Marx, I think, uh, which sounds very good in the, in the context of Marx, but what he really was trying to say was, please don't, go, don't let me do Podemos uh, a fast track tool. Uh, no, no, please don't expect me to do that's things fine. that we all decide together and that stuff because I'm not that. I'm not, I, don't, I'm not, I don't want that. No, we, we weren't going to win because we are fast and efficient. And he used those two words, efficiency too. And, and that hurt a lot of people. And so there was like a tension between efficiency and democracy. Uh, and it's not only conceptual because you could see like people, people there saying uh, very antagonist things. And I was there, I was over here. And uh, to tell the truth, most of the people didn't realize what is it? <laughs> what was in between lines. Uh, but the days and the hours passed, and the last day was really intense and really scary. I, I really thought, okay, this is the end. Because at some point, and I'm going to show you this, it's an anecdote. But no joke. <laughs> match on the okay. Ah, you remember the guy in the yeah. wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> he was in Podemos for that week and then he resigned. Uh, that was a key moment for him as a leader. I'm showing this again. He's brilliant. I'm not, I'm not trying to destroy the <laughs> demons at all. Yeah, just things that you don't see because these are internal processes and stuff. But this moment was a key moment for a lot of people supporting Podemos. Uh, Vista Alegre and Vista Alegre. the Congress and, uh, and this particular moment. Uh, so different in the stage, different uh, stream, different families of Podemos were proposing things. So at some point was Half of the audience applauding a lot to Pablo Iglesias and the other half applauding to the other guy. The other guy who was also in a wheelchair, so that's why I, well, uh, I was very sorry with him. And I was very, very, very weird. And um, so uh, they were applauding to one side and applauding to the other side, applauding to the other side, and then they whistled him. And then I was very, uh, one, of the, one of the leaders of Podemos said, Podemos, is not an experiment of a group of teachers. Podemos has to be the tool for the, ch the real change. So that was the level of the. Okay. So uh, it was a lot of battle of applauses. So Pablo Iglesias. changed the tone, absolutely. I'm going to challenge you. No, no, it's not, it's not, not, not a joke. I don't want a single applause to my intervention. Let's show the world that we are able not to applause every intervention. And people start talking. Voy a responder a la pregunta que os estáis haciendo todos. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué no estarías dispuesto a ser el portavoz de Podemos independientemente de los documentos que salgan? He's trying to explain that he is not going to be the leader of Podemos if his proposal is not approved independientemente de la estrategia política electoral que decidamos, independientemente del diseño organizativo. ¿Por qué? ¿Sabéis por qué? Porque lo que tengo 
precisamente de nosotros es que a veces somos capaces de decir no, aunque sea mucho más fácil decir sí, aunque sea muy fácil para Pablo Iglesias en Vista Alegre con su gente, con la gente de Perú, arrancar un aplauso, sí. This is so interesting. Uh, he is speaking about how people have a proposal, and if it's not working, I have to go because we are not politicians, yeah. professional politicians, and we have to respect that. Because for me, he says, for me, it would be very easy to raise my voice and get an applause from you. That's what we're going to happen. <laughs> Le podemos arrancar un aplauso simplemente elevando el tono de voz como ahora. Silencio. Silencio. Murió. Vamos a demostrarles que no tenemos por qué aplaudir. Murió el tío Botín. Very weird. So you have there the people who wanted to applaud to disobey him. Um, him, <laughs> him saying, I can't make you applause if I raise my voice and some people applauding as an automatic mechanism. Uh, very weird. And he's saying, I'm going home if you don't approve my uh, proposal. What was his proposal? Huh? What was his proposal? Efficiency they, and here, uh, they, they not, not layer representation system by circles. And the no going to local elections, but uh, a more centralized system. Yeah. Yeah. But you also said that uh, you had the voting system by anyone to join with email address. And yeah, all that was explained. So the, the, the proposals were online for a few weeks, so people were actually. I mean, the, the, the pre Congress was very good. People had the documents and the different. Uh, so. Alguien podría pensar, ¿por qué te has puesto en tres posiciones? Sabiendo que todas las puesto también no van a estar. So, this is like a key, a, a moment in which people say, okay, this is too, I mean, this, this, this leadership has gone into your head like woo, and, and, and uh, so it's too, and somehow in, 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 in those days, two poemas were. Board. The Podemos around Pablo Iglesias and the Podemos uh, around, I mean, the other, other Podemos more, more, yeah. Even none of them, again, discuss the leadership of Pablo Iglesias and the utility and the smartness and the, it's not about you have to go home because Podemos is ours, no. It's, a, it's about, come on, Pablo. Um, let's do this in a different way. Um, so you have the, the hardcore of Podemos, which are these people who are uh, yeah. behind him. Then you have another big group of people who doesn't like how decisions are being made, but they participate full time and in supporting Podemos uh, because they think that it is, it is worth it. I mean, even when it's not perfect, it's okay. Who are people who believe in more horizontal and undistributed and more left, clearly leftist discourse. And then you have what I call the inside outside of Podemos, which are people who are not part of Podemos but are very influential in public spaces. That at the beginning were very supporting very much Podemos and now became a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it's skeptical with with um, In the in the last regional elections, because we had regional elections a few months ago, Podemos didn't manage to be the second political party in any region. It was the third uh, political party in some regions, a lot of regions, and. Meanwhile, one year ago, the polls said they were going to win the elections. Mm. Now we're talking that they are around the, 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 the they manage in this in this in these regional elections uh, around the 15 percent of the polls. 
So uh, this 15% of the vote, the vote is very different from the results that more broad platforms and coalitions in local elections uh, achieved. Barcelona, Madrid, Valencia, two cities in, the, in Galicia, a lot of different cities in Spain, seven big cities in Spain, I would say, yeah, like this, the, the three more big cities and the other four are also in the top ten cities in Spain, have a mayor who is related with uh, 15M, 15M, in uh, least supported by Podemos. Uh, so the, 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 the truth is that Podemos by themselves today are weaker than Podemos and the, the people around them, all, all their initiatives that somehow are in the same context and that's that. I know this is this is not what you have read in, in, in international press because when, when what you read in the international press is mayor of Barcelona is for Podemos. Well she is not. I don't know in five years. Yeah, they probably met together and do a uh, common Podemos for everybody, I don't know. But today the mayor of Barcelona, the one who was in the eviction, he uh, she is she has his own party, grassroots and uh, very linked to social movements in Barcelona, and she had the support of Podemos and the uh, Greek party in Catalonia. So they had a coalition of three and went to elections. And they had a better result than uh, Podemos in regional elections in Barcelona, which are in two weeks, and they are going to have like 15% uh, Madrid, uh, this lovely uh, one month and a half before the local elections were in May one month and a half, this, this joint candidature of different parties supported by Podemos too had no no candidate, no 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 person, no leader. They had no name. At the very last minute they found found This young activist, <laughs> this old lady uh, called Manuela Carmena, 73 years old, she had been a judge for 30 years. Now he was retired. She was retired, and uh, she had a very good name in leftist professional context. 20 years ago, I had no idea who she was, and no one actually from my age or less, or even more, had an idea, an idea who, who, who this woman was. Uh, after two trials with different people to convince them to be the candidate, they couldn't, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they called this lady, Podemos called her, Pablo Iglesias called her, and explain to her, okay, I need a, uh, someone like you. Uh, I know you don't want to run politics, but I, I, I know people that speak so good of you, and I really like you to be the victim. And uh, she said no on Friday, and she said yes on Monday. And she's not from Podemos, but it's true that it was proposed by Podemos. Uh, and the rest of the parties, the local social movements uh, platform, the Green Again Party, uh, some people coming from Izquierda Unida, uh, okay, the rest of, of it uh, said, okay, yes, we don't have anything better, and we don't want the other option that you proposed. 
So let's go for it. Uh, I know very much the people who have been building this local uh, initiative in Madrid. They have been working for three years, negotiating, or two years negotiating, having meetings, breaking the negotiations again together. Podemos is a devil, Podemos is our friend. And in Podemos, the same. Uh, these squatters are uh, untreatable, you don't want to go with them anywhere. Uh, oh, they are so brilliant. Oh, they, I mean, it's been like crazy. And uh, none of them knew Carmena, and this, this lady, before she was announced. So this has been like a very top-down decision. Obviously they did a primary and she won. Uh, but it was like, okay, let's go. And they, they made a list. I was in a train coming back from a weekend and I received a call uh, from one of the person in the, in the list. I have the list. Uh, I, I'll give you the list and you, you can't say I, I'm giving you this, but uh, have a look to the list and the number one is Manuela Carmena. And no one knows who is she, but everyone says she is brilliant. Uh, and that was one month before the election. And in one month, this is the most similar thing to Obama that I've seen in my, my life. The uh, creativity in one month around this person, uh, music, but not from the party. It's like people making songs, uh, <laughs> funny songs, Manuel. Uh, Projection, projections in the street from the balcony in your piece. Uh, famous people out of the blue saying, oh, she's the one. Actors, TV presenters, even journalists. <laughs> So why again? Why? Why? Why in, in one month again? Uh, it has to do again with this kind of creativity, not the structure creativity, by, but they have, they generated the positive energy. I know that energy is but, uh, the positive uh, <coughs> context in which creativity means a lot. So suddenly, out of the blue, look, and it is out of the blue. I know them, and they didn't like literally made it. Uh, out of the blue, people began to make posters, uh, drawings, music, lots of things about this, this woman. And everything happened mainly because uh, after, you see that lady? Okay. Margaret Thatcher. Well, Margaret Thatcher uh, was the candidate for the Conservative Party. <coughs> we had um, the name of the, can the, the candidacy in the local initiative is Ahora Madrid. <laughs> now Madrid. Everything is like, let's win, now Madrid. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't see political parties, actually. Uh, so this is the debate, again, the TV, the debate between these two candidates. Uh, there were more candidates. The Social Democrat had been the second most important party in Spain, had a very poor candidate. And they did, <coughs> when she was already more or less famous, they did like a confrontation between these two old ladies who smile each other like, I'm going to kill you. 
look at that page. <laughs> uh, and in, in, this, in this debate, something very singular ha uh, 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 happened. Uh, she was talking like a uh, 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 Margaret Thatcher slash Berlusconi politician, like uh, making some very gross and uh, rude comments and attacking the rebel. And this woman who had the, the, the bag, the, the, the purse uh, in, in the table, because he was holding the purse, uh, was saying, ah, oh, friend, I don't think we, are, we, we disagree in that. I, I understand you, see. Uh, they was always trying to neutralize the uh, aggressiveness of her making her like the mom of everyone. I mean, you saw this debate and you wanted to be hugged by. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very, it's, it's, it's useless to try to explain the content of the debate. But that's this, the, 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 the common sensation was, oh my God, it's a woman that doesn't seem a politician, doesn't talk like a politician. He sometimes loses. Uh, the, 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 the thread of the conversation, but that, that then boom, she comes up with that two phrases that you say, wow, that's a wise woman, because she is a very good professional for 30 years and he's a judge, so there's no doubt in, in, in the professional. But he had this candor around that. So in any textbook of politicians, she would be failed. I mean, but now what we need is people that exactly like that. So in one month the campaign was so expansive that people were saying in the social networks I'm going to vote for Manuela. People are normally, you know, try to not to say political things in social networks, journalists and stuff. So they won. Uh, And again, she is a judge, and she she is used to have the last word in everything. So, three days after the election, she said, "Well, the program is not that important. The electoral program. <laughs> I'm not I'm not very much fond of the electoral program. <laughs> the electoral programs of Ara Madrid, the, the local initiative, was color collaborative, horizontal because Ara Madrid was like truly horizontal built." Uh, as a position of Podemos. It was like a counterbalance of, of Podemos and that. And uh, she started to say two things after the elections. One, I have nothing to do with Podemos. Every day. What, what do you think about the opinion of Pablo Iglesias? Uh, uh, I have nothing to do with Podemos. <laughs> well, you were, you were proposed by Podemos. Yeah, well, they called me. I said yes, but I'm not part of Podemos. Some people of Podemos are a member of my government, this is my government, not Podemos government. So every day since she was elected. And she's like the woman of the moment, so that is not very good for Podemos. You know, Podemos would appreciate very much if she gives some support. But she is reluctant to do that because she begins and ends in the town hall. I mean, you ask her about refugees, and, well, yeah, refugees, yes, because of the local acceptance of refugees. But if you uh, ask her about uh, what do you think about monarchy, monarchy? Can I decide, decide about monarchy in Madrid tunnel? No, okay, that's not my, that's not my thing. Uh, and that is working for her. And, uh, and, 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 and it is pretty clear that she doesn't want anything else after being mayor of Madrid. She doesn't want to be president of the government and something like that. So she's not being part of the debates about how to build a huge uh, candidature for winning in the general elections. And do you think that Podemos should open a little more and integrate local and social movements? <laughs> she goes every day by bus or underground to the, to the world. She's doing like the, all the, comp the the opposite things that usually politicians does. And so he's extremely, extremely popular in Madrid. Uh, she has like managed to really win uh, the elections and, and, and the debate. Uh, 
this profile is, is very different from, and also she's saying that the pros are she's doing like real change politics in Madrid, like she is very, uh, it's quite social democrat in a way, but social democracy has disappeared in, in Spain, so it seems radical. Uh, and she had stopped. She has stopped the evictions. She has uh, uh, re this this privatization, uh, recover, regain for the public state uh, a lot of a lot of privatizations uh, in Madrid. So she's doing very good. In the internal processes, again, she's now saying one well, the program. Have a mind. The collaborative program made by everything that's very hard to listen from the grassroots people. And two, uh, well, you know, I have a lot of activists in in, in the in my list. I have a lot of activists in my government. They're young people. They have to grow. So she has this condens you know, this this. Uh, what do you think about the people who were squatters, squatters three years ago and now are in the government? Oh, they were young. <laughs> yeah, if you're a squatter, you listen to that and say, I want to be. Right? Because you, I, I have won, I've built this, this, this campaign for you, I, 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 I uh, turned you the new Obama, the, uh, the Mujica Obama woman, and now you're saying that I'm yeah. too naive and, 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 and come on, don't do that. Yeah. And and he and she made Tabata, the guy for, we saw before, resigning for the tweets, and kind of like he, he was a key player. So to the, again to the outside, the government of Manuel Carmena is a complete success, and and the campaigning and the, the and the attitude of the mayor, her attitude are brilliant, uh, and it is very hard to conservative media to attack her. They tried to make some accusations and they were so ridiculous that they had to ratificate that everyone was making jokes of the media and that stuff. Again, in the inside, it's complicated because he, she considers so free that we, we are lucky that she is good. <laughs> because as free as she is, as, as free as she considered herself, if she was bad, uh, uh, that's a problem. Um, I personally don't think that she will become uh, other other thing that she is now. But again, as a model, this is a risky model. Um, let me. Well, Alan Colau, you, you already. How long do we have? At what time shall we or should we take the time? No, but I don't want to bore you more. Quan hauria de ser la millor de les notícies 
que la ciutadania s'autoorganitzi per decidir què és el que vol i com ho vol fer. Això és la democràcia i tot el que és són paraules. No som intrusos, som protagonistes i volem ser protagonistes d'aquesta ciutat i de la revolució democràtica que està en curs. En qualsevol cas, ens diuen qui som vosaltres, no? Clar, no com a teu d'arrogància de dir que som tothom, però som la gent que està a peu de carrer, som la gent normal, som la gent senzilla, que parlem amb els nostres veïns cada dia, que a diferència dels polítics professionals agafem el transport públic cada dia, que tenim feines precàries cada dia i que veiem el que hi ha cada dia. I per tant, segurament tenim un pols ciutadà i de la realitat bastant més acurat que molts polítics professionals. I qui som? En primer lloc, deixeu-me dir que som dones. Som moltes dones que estem... que estem... Feminism as a key role in the construction, the building of new politics in Spain. Som moltes dones que estem infrarepresentades en els espais de decisió, en els espais de poder polític i estem surrepresentades en la cura invisible que fa possible la vida de tothom, dels rics i dels pobres. Som les veïnes. Les veïnes i els veïns som els barris que han protagonitzat les millors conquestes d'aquesta ciutat, que no hi ha... Ok. She is Ala Golau, the one you saw in the eviction, uh, making the presentation of the local initiative. This is her party that then joined more forces and came into the town hall in, in Barcelona. She was the leader, not a very horizontal leader, uh, the leader of the more, the more well-known person of the platform of evictions. Uh, she was working in an NGO uh, on housing and other human rights uh, problems in Barcelona. So she wasn't a victim of the eviction, uh, although she was the spokesperson for the platform of the victims. Uh, and uh, at some point she resigned as a spokesperson of this platform and began making this uh, local initiative. It was very difficult, but they managed to re retain the respect of the activist groups that participated with her in the eviction problem, and they uh, stood by her all the time. Um, she is, to summarize, she is mm, very 15M. Uh, uh, Manuela Carmena in Madrid. Uh, she is a professional who is who is called by 15M initiatives or post uh, <laughs> initiatives. Okay, please help us. You are the face we we are looking for, and she works for that. Podemos a Pablo Iglesias. Uh, think in a way of representing or channeling 15M in a, in, in a very uh, design and, 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 and out structure. And in Barcelona, the, the scheme is very different. That they really do all the process of grassrooting decision, uh, grassroots decisions, assemblies, and that stuff. Only at the very end, they somehow betray that line of work and accepted to do uh, the list to the elections saying okay this and this for me, this and this, one and two for me, three and four for you and five and six for you. And so every cut, every party did their primaries and the winners went in one of those slots. You know what I mean? And that was kind of criticized by the basis saying okay you should have done one only one primary for the whole thing and we decide uh, everything not making a, 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 trading. a trading then one and three for me two and four for you uh, 
besides that, uh, she had a very difficult situation because we are in, in this debate about the independence of Catalonia. So she had to, you know, uh, begin doing a party without uh, focusing on independence because clearly the problems of the people in Catalonia um, goes much more beyond that. But not opposing to the independence because it's not something natural even for her or for, for the people who vote for her. So it was very difficult, but they won the elections. They won the elections after a lot of decades of conservative power in Barcelona. <coughs> in Barcelona. Uh, so these are the three key players now for the new politics in Spain. Podemos, which are undergoing a uh, structural crisis uh, that will probably will be fit in two or three months before the elections because they will open to everyone and everyone will say, okay, let's forget tensions and let's win. <coughs> Hopefully uh, that is what's going to happen.